been a few uh, changes and some updates and stuff that I like to share with you all real quick. Hopefully, this won't be long again. So we'll start off with the uh, really big things. Um, so down here on each side of the uh, layout, I added these uh, curtains to uh, cover the junk that's behind there. And I know we all have it. Um, I couldn't get it to go all the way to the corner over there like I wanted to, but um, I think it, it cleans it up pretty good though. Um, the other big thing is I got a uh, backdrop that I painted. So I got some uh, hardboard from Home Depot and I uh, just bought some regular blue sky paint and then I mixed it with like a dark gray, maybe medium gray acrylic paint. So you can see I got a fade happening. It's like kind of dark up top and goes light to the bottom. Um, I wanted to simulate kind of stormy sky or something like that. Um, but I really like how it turned out. So when I get down and take some pictures like that, you can see like there's a really clean background. Um, you know, not the wall showing like right there. So I typically get in close when I'm taking pictures of stuff. And uh, it just leads to a really clean picture when I take some pictures and stuff like that. Um, I also put one over here as well. Um, the guys at Home Depot, uh, they or actually I went to Lowe's. I take that back. I went to Lowe's um, and they cut it for me. You know, I, I measured, you know, kind of the height that I needed or the width and the length, I guess. Um, and yeah, again, when I get down here and, you know, zoom in, you get a really cool picture. And it's just, you know, a nice blue sky background. So, uh, yeah, those are the major two things um, that I've been messing around with. Um, since I'm over here, we'll just keep going. Um, I did kind of somewhat finish that structure right there. Um, finished the roof with some uh, copper tin looking stuff up there. I got that from uh, James Powell. He has a YouTube channel. Really cool dude, good friend. And uh, I just kind of followed his techniques on a lot of that stuff. Um, if we come down here, oh, I added a, uh, a little guardrail going around this uh, facility here. So I don't know, I think I'll paint and just add some rust or something to it and uh, kind of see what happens. I like the way it, it starting to come along here. It, it's starting to actually fill out and look like something. Um, <clears throat> when I put that backdrop back here, uh, there was a, a noticeable gap and you can still see some of it like right here. Um, so I started putting bushes and shrubs and trees to try and camouflage most of it. So uh, I think for the most part, it, it's doing what it's supposed to. I think I'll probably add a few more back here. Um, and I also just wanted some different sizes. So I will see what that looks like. Um, some of that stuff is glued down. Some of it's not because I may take it up and redo it or do something else. You know, uh, railroad is never done, right? Uh, what else I got? What else? What else? Oh, I started another structure here too. So I need to uh, obviously add some roofs and do some other stuff to it. I'm not sure where it's exactly going to go, but... It's over there for right now. <clears throat> and I literally just got done uh, 
picking up the ballast from where I stopped right here. And I think I came all the way up around to here. Yeah. So that's probably still wet, to be honest. Um, the train seems to be going around it just fine. I, I typically don't wait for it to fully dry to run trains. Maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. Eh. So the Bowers, I actually added another uh, scaffolding angle iron I-beam type structure so I could get more uh, buildings and stuff up there. So this stuff is the what came in that uh, skyscraper kit from Walther's. And then here's another section that was left in the box. And so the white I-beams are the things that I built. And like I said, I just wanted to add more stuff coming out in different directions. So that's the Bowers. It's actually growing. I'm digging it pretty much, man. So as we move along this side of the layout. Oh, I actually moved my grain facility back over here um, just because when it was on the other side of the layout, it um, <clears throat> it kept getting in the way. Uh, I didn't knock it over anything, but the way I got it positioned, it was just in the way and it started irritating me. So uh, I just moved it in the back. Um, so there's my first scale trains that I got and then the one that's running now that's a new one I just got so I need to let that run and let it get broken in some um, I just have it on mute so that's why there's no sound uh, sorry for going by that fast um, this is the other scale trains it's a uh, SD40-2 or dash T or something like that. But um, if most of you follow me on uh, Facebook, you'll see I've done this um, kind of it, it's from one of the switchers. And I know this is not a switcher. Somebody in the, one of the groups was like, it's not a switcher. Though. I was like, OK, I get it. Um, but I seen a lot of switchers and actually they were um, gen sets over in East L.A., and they all looked like that. Like there was so much graffiti on there and I thought it was cool. A lot of people, you know, don't jive with graffiti and tags and stuff on their layout. Um, and that's totally fine. I mean, I'm the opposite. I like a lot of graffiti. I like a lot of tags. Um, I think it's just the artist in me that wants to do all this type of stuff. Like, putting Wu-Tang on the side and Outkast. Um, I think I got the Beastie Boys and Run DMC over there. So um, my whole layout is going to have graffiti on it. and It's going to be tagged up. And, you know, if you don't like it, you know, that's cool. You do you and I'm going to do me. So, uh, but anyway, I want to get on a tangent with that. But I think that's it, man. Um, oh, I did put these locks on the railroad, on the layout. And I got that from uh, SoCal. He has, uh, I think I'll stick a link in here or something. But he has locks on his as well. And what they uh, represent or simulate, you'll see each of the locks are lined up with a switch. So if I get a little closer here, this lock is for that switch, this lock is for that one, so on and so forth. And so when I'm doing operations, like if I come over here and wanna start messing around with this facility, you know, the train will come up here, it'll stop, and I'm simulating one of the crew members getting off and actually unlocking that switch. So I will unlock this switch or unlock this lock to act like he or whoever unlocked that switch then he'll pull in a little bit I'll unlock this one and it'll pull all the way in and you know as I'm doing 
uh, moving cars around, I'll unlock. These will probably stay all unlocked until I get back out there on the main. Um, and then we'll lock them back up and then take off. So I thought that was a pretty cool uh, way to, one, slow down operations a little bit, you know, and to add just a little more uh, realism to it. So, yeah, I, I like the little locks a lot. Um, I was thinking I may want to do some actual ground throws as well, but I may save that for a, a, a bigger layout or something. Um, again, I'm not sure. So I think that's about it now. I'm at 10 minutes, and so I don't want to keep you guys too much longer. But, yeah, that's the update. And uh, once I get some more stuff going, and I will uh, keep you guys updated and posted. And, yeah, there's another look at that for all you guys that don't like graffiti. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, I appreciate y'all for hanging out. Thanks for all subscribing and support and all that stuff. And uh, I look forward to your videos too. Take care, y'all.